we have lost our paddle and it is flowing with the current. I hope you're a damn good paddler, Pete, because I can't help you. Where is it? All the way down there. You see it? <laughs> yeah, do you see it? Go, Pete. Where are you going? Wait, we're bumping. No. Welcome back, everyone. My name's Hobby Man Pete, and this is Hobby News, the channel to find all the quick info you would need to pick up a new hobby. Tonight's top story, kayaking. When talking about kayaking, we're going to be going over our three key points, those being how to get started, your budget, and the potential for growth. So grab your paddle, and let's hit the water. Now this is definitely going to be a really exciting one for me, as kayaking is a hobby that I hold very near and dear to my heart. And it brings me great pleasure to be able to give you some insight as to how to try your hand at it. Oh yeah, these are horrible. <laughs> Alright, well when it comes to starting off with kayaking, if it is something you're interested, there is a disclaimer I need to give you. Make sure that you are comfortable being in the water. If you are not, then when you inevitably tip over in your kayak and if you fall in the water, you want to make sure that you're not going to panic. And while you don't necessarily need to be a strong swimmer, you do want to have some basic swimming skills to make sure that you can survive. But if you have no concerns or fears about that, then I definitely recommend you give kayaking a try, so stick around. Once you have your mind set on the fact that you're going to be picking up uh, kayaking, the next step would be to go to our friendly neighbor, the internet, to look up best kayaking in my area. Doing this will give you two results. One, most obviously, it'll tell you where you can go kayaking in your area, and depending where you live and near what bodies of water, it could be a pretty easy drive or it could be a lengthy excursion. But the second thing that we really want to make sure we're covering is the fact that where you're going will have rentals for you. And the reason we want to talk about this is when it comes to starting out any hobby whatsoever, especially one that's based on excursions and doing outdoor activities, I always recommend starting off with rentals as that way when you make any monetary purchase of anything, you'll be knowing, you'll go into it knowing that it's something that you actually like and want to do. That way, because you're renting, if it's something you don't actually end up enjoying, it's no super harm to your wallet, your bank, or whatever financial profit you have. Once you've looked up where you can go kayaking, the next step would be to identify what kind of kayaking will be available to you in those locations. The reason being is that with kayaking, there are a few options in which you can do so based on the body of water that you're going to be actually partaking in. Because of this and the nature of kayaking as a form of exercise, you really want to make sure you're comfortable with wherever you're going to be kayaking. For example, anyone can really kind of kayak on a lazy river or something or a calm lake. But if you look up that the nearest place is an open ocean or a raging river, you want to make sure that you're actually comfortable with doing something of that nature. And because of that, I highly recommend you look into it and ask yourself, what are you actually prepared for? If you aren't actually prepared for it, then you can find yourself coming up against a strong current or something that you're just completely not prepared for, maybe even some sharp rocks. So kind of want to make sure that you don't want to be stuck in a situation that you can't get out of. However, once you've done your research, you found out where you're going to be going, and you have your determination, all that's left to do is paddle your heart out. So next step, let's talk numbers. Now that we've hit our next topic, that being the budget, we're going to have to discuss our two options here. Those being one, renting, and two, buying. As I mentioned before, I highly recommend that if you're doing this for the first time, you should always rent first. That way, you can figure out a few things. One, whether or not you enjoy it enough that you would want to go again. Or two, whether or not, even if you enjoy it, is it something that's worth purchasing and having versus just renting each time you want to go. Myself, for example, I rent every time I go because uh, kayaking gear can also take up a lot of space and it's a monetary cost that may not be justified depending on where you live and how often you would be going. When it comes to renting, the average price that I found tends to be from the $30 to $60 range, and that all depends on the state and or park that you're getting it from. However, the good news is that that price range usually covers everything you would need, including the kayak, the paddle, as well as life vests if you want them. However, 
something that you knew, do need to keep into consideration is whether or not it's something you're going to be doing on your own or you're going to be bringing people with. If you are bringing people with you though, there's a chance of even lowering that price and getting a double kayak, which fits two people in a single kayak, which and then you can split the cost, saving you some extra money. The only thing you'll have to worry about again are transportation costs to get to the location to kayak, but that's going to be the case for most of these excursion style hobbies, so that'll just depend on you and your situation. However, if you are someone that is looking into purchasing your own kayak and paddle, the cost will go up drastically. But because of the nature of this channel is meant more so for introductory style, then we're going to focus more on introductory or beginner prices of kayaks and paddles, so those more entry level equipment. For the price of that, a kayak, depending on where you go, be it a sporting goods store like Dick's or online through Amazon, the cost is going to be within the $200 to $300 range for a decent, solid kayak. And with an additional paddle that you would need, which again, double-sided, uh, is gonna be around the $60 range. Overall, you're gonna be looking at about $360 tops, throw in some extra in case you wanna afford your own life vest. Again, the prices that we just talked about were for the beginner level of equipment. If you are someone that's looking to expand your interest with kayaking and go into more dangerous situations such as whitewater kayaking or being out in the open ocean for a longer period of time, then you're going to want to look into getting more durable and lasting kayaks made out of better materials. However, the cost of those can go up quite drastically, going even into the $1,000 range. So just be careful of what you're going to be getting into if that's something you're looking into. And speaking of whitewater kayaking and open ocean kayaking, this is where we can delve into the potential for growth. As I just mentioned with those two examples, kayaking can really change depending on how often you go, but also on where you're going kayaking. If you're someone like myself that started out on being on calm lakes or calm rivers, then you may want to advance your skills into and pushing your exercise and fitness levels into higher strength areas such as fighting stronger currents in raging rivers or ocean currents. Again, this is something that is a bit more dangerous, so you want to ask yourself if you are mentally and physically prepared for that, but it is definitely something that can be quite exhilarating. So if you want to take this to the next adventurous hobby level, that's where you're going to want to start looking into. Kayaking can also be something that you can do while even traveling. Don't think you're limited to just doing something within your area, even if you've also bought your own equipment. Not only can you travel with your equipment on like a, you know, on top of a car or something across your country, but whenever visiting another country or state or wherever you are, be sure to look into what rental gear they have in your area. You'd be surprised at how popular kayaking actually is on an international scale that if you just quickly Google search, you know, nearest kayaking in my area, kayak rentals near me, you'd be surprised at how often a result will pop up that's within easy distance to cover. Definitely something to keep in mind and definitely something to expand your experiences when traveling anywhere. Another way in which you can look into expanding your interest with kayaking is to also remember that it, because it is athletic in nature, it also means it can be competitive in nature. Look into kayaking competitions if you want to challenge others with how fast you are or again look into more dangerous situations such as white water kayaking which is where you're going down rapids to test your fitness levels and also again maybe even test your speed and how quickly you can overcome a course. Definitely something to keep in mind and definitely an area of interest for those who have a competitive side. And that's all we have time for today here at Hobby News. Hope you were able to learn something new and just maybe you're ready to glide on your water yourself. Be sure to subscribe to see what hobby we cover next. And as always, when it comes to hobbies, write down in the comments below, what do you do?